After months of demolition, digging, and foundational work converting this old stone barn, we are finally shifting our attention to something cosmetic, finishing off the wood beams. For us, these perfectly smooth wood beams that were installed only a few years ago simply do not match the character of a stone house that is hundreds of years old. So today we are going through the grueling process of hand hewing the beams in place in order to bring back some of the old world character. But of course, as with any project here, it's not without its ups and downs. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And hopefully Brady finally learns his lesson about playing with fire. So we debated for a very long time whether or not we should do this project at all. But today we are ripping up all of the floorboards for a rather aggressive project. Today we're going to hand distress all of the existing wood beams. I really hope I don't knock the camera down. off of the tallest building in the world and have no fear but oh my gosh Brady but I don't I don't trust myself not to fall so even if we we're only like two feet off the ground I would be terrified of this right now I need to take gymnastics okay. stakes were never this high <laughs> So a project like this is very much gonna come down to personal preference. We love the hand-hewn, very rustic old beams. And these floorboards here, the, uh, the beams for the ceiling underneath on the ground floor, they are kiln dried, professionally cut, very smooth boards. These are not the original beams. Now there's not a lot we can do to fix that, but what we can do is take them through that hand-hewn process in place. So today we're gonna to grab a broad ax, a couple of machetes, and we're gonna chip away at them and hand hew the beams in place, mix it up with some fire, and then finally stain them and finish them to look old as if they were hand hewn. I will say it's a very strange feeling taking a broad ax to the same beam that is holding you up. In, in most situations with old barn beams, they would have taken a round log, then they would have used a broad ax like this to kind of shape it into a more square form, but it never would have gotten perfect. So you have natural divots and flare ups and broad ax marks. And there's a lot of different techniques to getting it nice and worn but the best technique is to start with the broad axe.
So one thing that's pretty fascinating is if your house does not have a road leading to it to where it's too hard to get building supplies, then you have to call up the helicopter. So right now there's a little bit of a construction work going off on the other side of the mountain. So what's going on is they are using kind of an area in front of our house here as a staging site for material. And then they will use the helicopter to fly that material over everyone's houses to the construction site where they can't actually drive trucks. So when hand cueing a log with a broad axe, there is somewhat of a rhythm and technique to it as far as the, the spacing of the marks. But to me, I find when distressing like this, you can't quite overdo it. It just needs to all peer, peel off. And if you have more broad axe marks than they would have used originally, it just adds to the character, at least for me and my personal preference. But the next phase will be adding cracks in the beams. And that, that does take a bit of finesse. We thankfully have some natural cracks, but not nearly as many as there would have been if this was built with green lumber. All right. Oh, this looks like a good one. Ooh, yeah, you want to pick this one? That one's perfect. Right here. Oh, get up. <laughs> All yeah. right, and then there's one more. You can pick it. Yum. Oh, these look good. Our garden has gotten a little bit out of control. We've been busy and also kind of discouraged by this garden because it didn't seem to be doing very well, so we kind of neglected it and Things got a little crazy, but Things we do have some everywhere. really nice ripe strawberries. Yum. And we've seen some beans that are kind of popping out. Looks like the zucchini is going to do well. So I think, I think it's going to be okay. Twist at the bottom, pick it up and twist it. And then hold it up. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! We got some lettuce. lettuce. We'll leave swall leave swall picking, but... Nice. Looks good. Dinner is served. <laughs> Give me the reality of our garden situation. <laughs> so, we are definitely not uh, Pinterest, Instagrammable gardeners. Mm -hmm. Our garden is pretty <laughs> ugly. <laughs> We're a bit busy. <laughs> We're, We're building we are a house. Not, um, We're building a house and the girls are going to school. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, buddy. You're right. Yep. Um, what is this here? So we have... One lettuce that is completely rotting. Yeah. We forgot to pick it. Uh, but our cauliflower. We one. Is it's actually... flowering, so it's we're a little bit late in picking it as well. I can't do it one-handed. Okay, I'm gonna get this one. I'll get that one for you if you like. It's like. Woohoo! Yeah. So. I yeah. Meh. So, nice. Eh. That and then we one? just have to shed yeah, all the leaves for off, and then we can cook it up and eat it. Bon appetit! <laughs> bon appetit!
So we have been here for over eight months now, and this is the first project that we're working on that isn't really demolition inside the house. This is aesthetic, and these beams are going to look the way that we finish them when the house is done, and that is so exciting to me. Is that the first thing? Yeah. the sharp objects and then try again. All right, more graceful this time. Okay, so <laughs> you're gonna put it in, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, there is no real wrong way of doing this, but there is a process. So. First, we've used the broad axe to get it to this point. Then you need to put in some sharp and deep lines like this to mimic the, the natural splitting effect. Thankfully, we have a good amount of decent sized cracks, but not enough because had these been green trees placed in, they would have uh, cracked all over the place. So ideally you have like a Dremel tool with a wood cutting spinning disc that you slice through there. I couldn't find one and I was too lazy to order one online. Um, so we're kind of gouging the wood by hand using this guy. And oh, that'll add all of the, uh, what do you call them, cracks. Then the most fun bit is to light the place on fire. So you carefully, lightly char. We just did a ton of tests over here, and we found for us, in our preference, just a light char across everything looks the best. And what happens is, like all of the cracks and the deep gouges, they go black, which makes them uh, pop off more and look really nice. But you also want the uh, all of the white wood just to have a very light char to it. And then lastly, we need to sand. Not lastly, there's still like two or three more steps we're talking about. So this guy is a spinning wire brush. It's the same tool that we used um, cleaning off the stone walls. Um, this specifically will give it a really cool effect of um, gouging out the softer um, rings. So as a tree grows, there's hard rings, there's soft rings. And um, if you look at any old door, which will um, insert a shot of one of these old doors here, you're gonna see they're full of you call it ridges or mm -hmm. rivets or I don't know, not rivets, yeah, Crack, it's almost like cracks yeah. and this will induce that um, very quickly and aggressively and make it look more aged. You never knew you had to like join the circus to do this, did you? It's fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Okay, so then we are using a dark walnut stain. Um, which we did some experimenting and found that um, lightly putting it on with a rag was much better than brushing it on. Because if you use a brush, the stain will get back into all of the cracks and then it kind of doesn't allow the hand-hewn look to shine through as much. So the only problem is that the um, what the flamethrower does quite nicely is it gives a black charred look against all of the sharp bits that the hatchet pulled up. Um, so you do need to reignite it and but, burn it again. But not right away. Not right away, because if you do it right away, this is what happens. Actually, that's why I find it. It looks better if you do it right away, because then it, it lightens the stain a little bit, and it's more fun. And that is, that's perfect, that's great.
That's good. cool. There's a whole other house to, or a whole house to do still. I know. It's a lot of work. So last night I was very quickly defeated by the process of trying to uh, clean off the underside of the beams. It's already hard enough trying to swing in such a small space. That's why you keep hearing it ding like that. It means that I missed because I'm not swinging properly because there's no room to swing properly. But when you try to get to the underside here, it's just near impossible. And all of those misses are causing me to dull the the, uh, the axe more and more and more. So I took last night to think about it and I found a different solution. So I went and I picked up the cheapest planer that I could find and then I more or less destroyed the blade intentionally so that instead of smoothing out the wood, it would chip it up and eat it up and cause it to be distressed. And then if I push the planer against the grain rather than with the grain, it really does a rather nice job at eating up the wood. Uh, kind of makes it look like a um, more of a rough sawn look rather than a hand hewn look. But then I can go over top of that rough sawn look with a couple of broad axe strokes. And it'll make the process a lot easier. I think I spent like an hour last night on half a beam and just destroyed myself doing it. I should clarify that no, I can't take the beams down, or I guess I could. They are cemented into the wall, so they would have to be uh, jackhammered down. And yes, after starting this project, I have questioned if it was worth it. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of work in place. Uh, doing it in place is, it's got to be 10 times harder than doing it on the ground. Uh, but just seeing the small section that, that's finished, I know it's going to be worth it. Now to those of you who are going to say that I'm only lighting this on fire just for the fun of it, because I'm a, a little boy inside. 
You're only mostly correct. But the reality is, is that there is a technique to it. So um, the light burning actually lightens the stain a little bit, but then it chars the tips of all of the ax marks. So where there's a, a fine point, it darkens that ever so lightly, uh, which is removed in the previous burning when I wire brush, because you have to burn first, then wire brush. So all of that contrast is removed. So we're just lightly adding it back because at least I personally love the contrast between the dark edges and the light wood where the stain can't quite reach uh, when using a rag but it's all personal preference, but mostly it's just fun. All right, so don't don't play with fire. It is an important part of part of the process, but uh, yeah, there are um, risks associated with playing with fire. It's all good. Well, I think that's it. I'm very thankful to have this process over with. It was very labor intensive, but I can't wait to see what it'll look like when we put the wood flooring back. We're actually gonna paint the flooring white and you'll have a beautiful contrast between the dark brown hand-hewn beans and that white ceiling.